Zinch versus High Elves has historically been a little bit of a weird one for Zinch due to High Elves' ability to resist fire damage and generally having a pretty good roster set up for what Zinch can bring to the table. Today, though, Boojalish is going to risk it for the biscuit with a double flying monster here. He's got Kairos Fate Weaver, of course, as his lord, and then the Cockatrice he saw there at the opening. Very interesting choice. I'm genuinely curious to see how it will perform in this battle, especially considering Imric is on the opposite side on his dragon here in the air. We've got Marauders and Zangors mixed as a front line here with some Chaos Knight support. Chaos Knights feel very good right now. Uh, probably one of the best units for any of the Monogods and Warriors of Chaos. We've also got some Screamers up in the sky. And that's basically it. Very straightforward rush build for the High Elves uh, defending. We've got Imric on his dragon, of course, as mentioned. Talons of Torquelada with a couple of regular archers. Lots of spears. And Silver and Guards for some staunch defense. Valyrian Reavers, Fireborn, and it looks like a little... A life mage as I get completely tongue-tied. It's really not that hard to say, but anyway. <laughs> Cockatrice is going to come forward, and it looks like... Is it just going to go straight for Imric? I mean, of course, with all of this... Screamers and everything else, uh, it's relatively low risk, I guess, to try and take on Imric directly. But still, the Cockatrice could take a couple of big hits and get routed off relatively quickly, I would think. But uh, we'll watch this giant derpy... Monster Bird play out a couple of attack animations. Imric's able to kind of just waltz out of that position there momentarily. Gaze of Fate is going to be used by Kairos as the uh, air forces fight on the ground alongside their cavalry. Cockatrice getting some really nice hits here as Imric kind of just ignores it. Screamers, I'm not sure exactly what they're doing. I guess they're here also helping to take out these Illyrian Reavers. Taking a look at the rest of the battlefield here, we see the Zinch forces have engaged. Staunch spears wherever they can. Got some marauders into the second level. Start pressuring those archers as well. Knights also turning the flank there to try and engage on those Lyrian Reavers. While Kairos dives in the back line to try and snipe out the life mage. But here comes Imric retreating from this position as he feels it's a lost cause. Going to leave those silver and guard to try and hold out as long as they can. And uh, take a chunk out of, uh, yeah, the cockatrice in the sky actually. And just leaves Kairos to kind of maraud in the back line with his marauders. Fireborn also moving in to try and crush some screamers. If they can get a charge on the screamers on the ground, they'll definitely do some pretty serious damage. But uh, yeah, the Zangor is currently struggling quite badly. Solren Guards do have expert charge defense, so the Zangor's very high charge bonus does not come into play there at all. Definitely neuters their effectiveness somewhat, although they probably still end up beating the Silver and Guards, to be honest, in the long run. But it's not looking great for them in certain circumstances. Let's see here. Imric continuing to take hits from uh, they're hitting the Cockatrice, actually. Yeah, doing some fairly serious damage to the Cockatrice, but the Screamers and the Cockatrice together just continuing to pressure him. Life Mage slowly getting sniped by Kairos. It's going to have to dedicate some healing to herself to stay alive. Here comes the Screamers once again, and Kairos diving in. Danger close on the Fireborn, but they immediately peel in the opposite direction. Probably, you know, away from where they should. Trying to help support Imric here, take out these Screamers. Again, I don't know. They must have had a charge order directly on the Cockatrice, because they really don't do a whole lot of damage to the Screamers. It's one of those units that if you target them directly, they will take damage very fast. They have extremely low HP, but if you don't target them directly, the units oftentimes will just not attack them and have a hard time actually getting enough hits to uh, meaningfully take them down. But uh, yeah, these Spearmen now counter-reinforcing back to help Imric once again. And Imric also, probably I think the High Elf player here is trying too hard to just pull them out of situations. Needs to probably just leave them, or leave him rather, and let him... Uh, you know, get some hits in, maybe accrue some actual value, because right now he really hasn't got much. I mean, less than 500 value, because he's kind of just been running around the whole time. But uh, Screamer's here, starting to run out of, out of steam a little bit. Zinch, though, has managed to annihilate a lot of units. Cockatrice also kind of just chilling out there in the open right now. Should be coming back very shortly. So Imric sensing Kairos is potentially in danger here. Would love to see him drop. Nope, looks like he's going to throw a breath attack on some Marauders right there, which is, uh, you know, it is going to finish off those Marauders, but let's see if he gets an attack order in on Kairos. Knights of Zinch 
continuing to pursue the Reavers and Archers in the back line and make them have a really bad day. Marauders over here. The Zangors also, it looks like, are maybe going to be defeated in the long run by the Silver and Guard. It seems pretty even. But uh, Imric finally drops on Iros, but not before the Cockatrice manages to ally. So it's three bird heads versus one dragon. Many sets of wings flapping about and smacking each other. And it's not uh, not looking too bad for Imric right now. He does have Lord of Dragons on the Cockatrice, not to mention Talons of Torcoleta are danger close, providing some extra weakness to fire, which will, of course, increase Imric's damage output significantly. <laughs> An extra 20% damage on such high weapon strength means, yeah, that poor Cockatrice is just getting absolutely pounded. The rest of the army, though, for Imric is struggling pretty badly as the uh, Chaos Knights and Screamers now move in to support this final heroic engagement. Silver and Guards and Spearmen just continuing to, continuing to hold out, but none of them are in the critical position to support this particular engagement, where, obviously, the outcome of the battle will largely be decided by what happens here. So let's keep the health bars up. See Imric taking hits. He pretty much finishes off the Cockatrice, but does manage to get a regrowth. So maybe not fully finished off. Should come back shortly with the healing from Kairos. Kairos himself basically taking no HP damage. Gets some Screamers on station. We do see finally some High Elf Spears supporting now this position. Trying to finish off the Chaos Knights here. Get those Talons of Torquilada available to uh, try and fire. Once again, apply that weakness to Flame. But uh, no, actually, take it back. The Chaos Knights managed to maneuver out of that position. We're going to see some foul Zinchian magic bombardments here. Gets a nice impact on those High Elf Spears. And Imric's trying his best to hold out. Cockatrice does come back here, though. And once again, 2v1. It's tough for Imric to try and handle this. A handful of Screamers also contributing. And the Chaos Knights get a pretty critical rear charge here helping to take out and route off some of these Spearman units that are also supporting here. Another uh, regrowth from Kairos, this time on himself. At least he attempted it before getting struck to the ground here. But very quickly he'll bounce back up, flap his wings about, and start to get some of that magic back. No healing, of course, for the High Elves as their caster is long gone. And certainly some healing for Imric right now would be quite decisive, but alas, not meant to be. Ujelicious manages to clean up that end game and a very well played to him. I actually really like the Chaos Knights. Like I said, I think they're probably one of the best units for any of the Monogods or for uh, Warriors Undivided right now. Cockatrice also kind of helps support, doesn't necessarily pay for itself, but I mean, it's here. It's an extra flying single entity to throw in, throw around as needed. It's definitely nice to see. Screamers also helping to contribute as a great anti-large AP support unit. Marauders and Zangors are just kind of here as a front line trading reasonably decently. Although it must be said, Silver and Guards return the favor fairly well in terms of getting value. Imric was really just the biggest letdown. I mean, he ultimately did get some value. I think he just could have maybe been used a little bit better in the early parts of the game. Um, you know, trying to run away less and actually maybe do some attack animation, soaking some damage so that the life mage can then come in and, um, yeah, try and, uh, try and maybe get a little bit of healing. But it's definitely an interesting one, you know, uh, High Elves versus Zinch is a matchup that, again, has historically been a little bit of a weird one for Zinch. Especially, like, if you're playing campaign, trying to invade Ulthwan, and you haven't specifically set up all your, all of your armies for it, right? Like, you're just bringing over the armies you use to conquer the rest of the world. It's likely to have a lot of fire damage in there, so... Ujilicious, though, constructs his build very smart without any sort of fire damage, and just, uh, you know, just powerful units. They all trade reasonably cost-effectively, so very nice to see. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.